everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. You know, we have had uh, Dick Long on the show before. Uh, in fact, Dick was one of the first guests that we had on the show in, uh, a couple of years ago when we started this. And uh, now he has been kind of looking back at some of the folks that have had major influence on the industry. And Dick is one of those. Now he looked at it and said, you know, he has spent a lifetime doing good things. Here he is. Now he's Lifetime Achievement Award winner is Dick Long, who is now he instructor number 49 and is also the founder of DUI Dry Suits. And I asked Dick to come back onto the show and talk to us a little bit about that. Congratulations, Dick, by the way. Well, thank you very much. It's a great honor and I'm most, most grateful. I want to talk a little bit about, though, being Nawi instructor number 49. That is, uh, that's a good number. Uh, it's uh, it's great. And uh, I think on the first class, I think they handed out numbers by alphabet. In other words, the number one was a guy with the name A. And it, when it went through, and uh, uh, when we were there, uh, uh, we did feel we were uh, pioneering. Uh, we had the contribution of the YMCA instructor program with the R R Red Cross program out of uh, Florida and the L.A. County program. And they all three contributed everything they had, put it in a pot and called it Nowy. The only things I do anymore, I teach instructors about thermal protection, uh, virtually all of the various inst uh, instructional agencies that have dry suit programs. They've sent me their program and I've I've kind of either edited it for them or authored it for them. Uh, I mean, as, if, if you will, as time moved on, uh, I got involved with the United States Navy and the Sea Lab program. That got me into saturation diving, uh, the first thousand foot dives, and we got involved in the offshore oil business. And so, if you will, uh, the opportunities in front of me just kept opening, in which in turn I didn't have any more room to, to, to teach scuba diving. But many of my, my students uh, went on to become diving instructors. And uh, in, in fact, whenever they would have a, an ITC, an, uh, an instructor training course, they would usually take uh, most of my staff to run them. And whether it was Dowie or Patty or whoever, I didn't care. Uh, it's all for the ocean, and that's what we, we, we should do the best we can at every time. So let me ask you, you've, you've been working with dry suits. Now, there's been a lot of different technologies, a lot of different things tried over the years. Uh, there's been shell suits, there's been crushed neoprene, there's been neoprene. Where is all this going? I mean, we're looking at the future of diving, and I'm sure there's something out there that you haven't found yet. I am the inventor of the hot water suit. And all your saturation diving done anywhere in the world is done with a hot water suit. Um, and uh, when our patents ran out, we had other people copy us. They didn't do a very good job, but but they they, they have put some in the market. But still, I think our suits are the premium suits in the world. Uh, that said, uh, that you have to be tied to an umbilical. Well, not all, all diving can be tied to umbilical. So now what we're doing is we have successfully made dry suit underwear that is electrically heated. We can carry a battery pack on our on our tank. We are building those now. We, uh, in fact, this year we will be introducing at the Dima show here in a couple of weeks um, uh, a less expensive version. Uh, it's it's like anything else. As if as we make them, we learn more and we perfect more. We get better better uh, circuits, etc., etc., etc. The battery technology in the last years have, have advanced greatly, and so. Um, uh, that's now realistic. It's now realistic. So therefore, uh, we can have small ladies who are very intelligent scientists go in the waters in Antarctica and come out when they're tired, not because they're cold. That's a, an awesome, awesome uh, prospect because we, we all know, especially those of us that do dive cold water, that um, there, there just is nothing worse than getting out of the water and being cold. So That's right. But also what you don't probably recognize to the extent you should and that is when you get out of the water and you're cold you cannot do you do not have 100 percent of your capacity you do not have the strength you do not have the endurance and you damn sure don't have the tactical sensation where you can feel something and tell and consider what it is you simply survived the experience so i want to talk a little bit about uh, doing more than surviving the experience i want to talk about uh, advancing the experience now you and i discussed this briefly yesterday uh, b before we get into doing the interview um, about what the industry needs to look at 
down the road. I mean, we're we're at a point right now where we're seeing uh, some new young people come into the business, but not enough. Where do you think this needs to go, Dick? I am concerned about about diving as a, as an art form uh, and and carrying all these young minds forward. I don't mind if we have a lot of people who are what I call looky loos or or who are casually interested or want the underwater experience. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not the core people that I'm trying to push, help push that outer envelope. The diving industry is shrinking, no question about it. Are the hardcore divers shrinking? Yeah, a bit. Cold water, yeah, a bit. Um, but that's that's where I'm I'm that's where I'm aiming my efforts in protecting that hardcore diver who wants to know what's on the other side of that horizon, what's on the other side of that reef. I care about what's going further forward. I think our industry needs to wake up because we are losing our customer base. We are not we are not bringing in the young people and having them become uh, totally dedicated to the underwater, underwater world the way we did when I was younger. But also there's a lot more competition for their interest, their time, uh, and for their recreational dollar. And and even for their professional dollar, I mean, uh, uh, everybody's budgets have been cramped because of, um, of of the economics we we live in. So uh, I want to see us perfect more. Um, and and let me just give you an idea: we cannot pay enough money to have instructors do the kind of teaching we want. Uh, uh, because there's not enough money in it. Divers learn to dive one diver at a time. We we take six people in the diving class today. That's a full class. Whereas when I started, we were like 10 and 12 students in a month, but we only taught them so far. Um, and then after that, it was on the job training. Well, we need to have better training. We have lots of closed circuit rigs. That is not a toy to be playing with if you don't know what you're doing. So <clears throat> I want to see the diving industry develop a program of leaders for instance people will do for free what you can't pay them to do the boy scouts of america the girl scouts the red cross all prove this to be true uh look at the at the disasters the hurricanes we've had so far this year and how many people came out of the woodwork they brought their boats they they, they brought their generators and they, and they moved in and started helping people without any possibility of ever being paid for what they're doing well we can the dive clubs used to be the backbone of the diving industry it's not anymore i think that that we and now we particularly could start classes on uh, just like the gold wing road riders association that's a uh, uh, named after gold wing uh that's a honda motorcycle it's a big right, honda right. Uh, well they have training programs every year where they train leaders uh, in various different aspects, uh, how to how to run training programs, how to how to uh, lead rides, uh, how to prepare things, how to do maintenance on your bike, uh, uh, and they have and, and people go through steps. They start as a, maybe a ride coordinator or a ride conductor. They go all the way through the steps in a club until they get up to where the, the president of the club, and then, and then they can retire or, or go do something else. So the, the, we have a constant supply of uh, volunteers to take on jobs, and they've had some training to do it. But all that training was done for free. All that all the trainees trainers did it for free, and all the people who attended the classes did it for free. So that uh, the result is we have fewer accidents, we have better riders, we have uh, better conditions all the way around. The diving industry needs to have something similar to that. The British Sub Aqua Club, for instance, was patterned after that concept. So, uh, uh, and Dima could do it, now he could do it. Right now, nobody's doing it. And yet, and, and yet we complain because our industry is shrinking. Well, sure. hey guys, go look in the mirror. The other piece, of all of this, and you and I talked about this before, is the medium in which we work, the oceans. And if we don't pay attention to what's happening there, and I know you as, uh, as head of DUI have done a great deal, and I appreciate that, about protecting the oceans. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about what needs to happen, Dick. Mankind is going to increase its population. As it increases its population, it is going to consume raw materials or natural resources. 
that's going to include fish. So therefore, people are going to eat my little fin friends. Uh, uh, so, and, and as mankind encroaches on the ocean, we destroy habitat where those little fishes grow up. So we need to, for instance, when uh, we call it artificial reef program, actually what, what it is is man-made reefs. There's nothing artificial about them. And we could, we could have had literally hundreds of ships that were, were left over from World War II about, out of which we could make uh, uh, man-made reefs. Uh, we took a Canadian destroyer because we couldn't get an American one, and we turned it into uh, a man-made reef right here in San Diego. It was a 366-foot-long uh, uh, Canadian destroyer escort. This is something that won't fit in a football field and is as tall as a seven-story building. And the fish just love it because offshore here, 85% of our bottom is sand or mud. So therefore, there's no home for fishes there. So when we take these ships and clean them properly, clean them properly, underline that, clean them properly, prepare them properly, then site them where there's a slight current going through um, so that the, the, the food sources and whatnot come through it. Um, uh, I mean, that, that ship is, is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. She's got enemies all over it. And, and wherever you go, the fish just cloud around it. They weren't there before, sir. They weren't there before. So we created a home for fishes. Okay, we need to do more of that in my view. And then also you take tax consumers as surplus ships sitting and hanging uh, uh, at anchor in a bay somewhere, and you turn them into tax producers or taxpayers because uh, the city can charge, uh, get a percentage of all the, uh, uh, the tickets that when, when people go out to, to visit them. So and decide, but also we can make them a safe place, a safe playground for divers. So therefore, the divers can go through their classes when they get done. They could get on a boat. They could go out there and they could play on these ships. And because they've been properly prepared, they're safe. At the same time, they are a hatchery for fish. So here we're doing the economically right thing and the ecologically right thing, both at the same time. That doesn't happen very often. Sounds like good words, and uh, I've, I've been on the ship before. I, I've been on those kind of ships before, and they are wonderful playgrounds for divers. They are wonderful places for, uh, for sea life. Well, Dick, appreciate the things that you've done for the industry. I know that you're going to continue to lead the way, whether it's in keeping warm underwater or, or in uh, keeping boats out there on the bottom to make sure that there's a good playground for us as divers. Appreciate that. Uh, congratulations again on the Now Eight Lifetime Achievement Award. And I know that everybody will see you at DEMA, and you'll be talking about uh, the newest, latest things with uh, DUI. Oh, yeah. We, we have a ton of new products, ton of new products, and uh, some really advances, to, especially the, the weight and trim system. Uh, we have a new one. Uh, I have a big thing about weights. Most dead divers have their weights on them. And, and that's because they couldn't get rid of them or didn't think about it or they were too complicated, which I, that's the point that I, I make most of the syst weight systems that are out there in the market today. Uh, they're too complicated. So, uh, or the, the, the diver can't, can't get rid of them. So we have a brand new system we're going to be introducing at DEMA that solves all those problems. Anyway, and to me, that's very exciting because, well, we're going to make diving better, safer, which means that the divers can do more, go more, see more, and... Um, it, it, it's, it's very exciting. And looking forward to seeing what you have in store for us. Dick, again, thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure, sir. If you enjoy the podcast, hey, please subscribe on Apple Podcast or Google Play. And if you would like to have, make a comment, email me, podcast at nowie.org. That's this episode of Nowie's Dive Team Report. I'm Greg Martin. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I'll see you underwater. Underwater.